hey guys welcome to my channel so god's got me all up and through some stuff today y'all <laughs> and so i'm going to share that with you today the word that god gave me i wrote it down is jesus already paid the price so why are you paying Jesus already paid the price. So what are, so why, so what are you paying? In John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he, what? Gave his only son that whosoever believes should not perish. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Matthew 14, if you read from verse 13 through 21, and I will paraphrase Jesus had compassion on the people. He gave, he healed. That's what he was doing. And in verse 15, you see his disciples saying to him, you know, Lord, it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. But in verse 16, Jesus says, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And so the story, well, it's not a story. It goes on where Jesus takes two loaves and three fish and he was able to thank, he thanked the Lord, broke bread, and he provided to 5,000 men, not including the women and the children yet. And there was more to spare. Too often today, this is reversed on the multitude. You see, in this scenario, what happens today is rather than providing this whole scenario where God says we will provide, we're not going to send them away. But today the scenario is that it's reversed on the multitude. Okay. So those in need where they have to go and provide not only for themselves, but for false ministers and prophets in order to be healed. So first of all, there wasn't going to be no type of healing because Jesus was already healing. He was healing. He was laying hands on everybody. He was teaching. But nowadays you have false prophets and false ministers that say to you, hey, you got to pay me first before I can move. But are we greater than our master? But here you see, however, too often this is reversed on the multitude, those in need where they must go and provide not only for themselves, but for the false ministers and prophets in order to be healed. Let's talk about Passover in Luke 22, 7 through 13. Jesus had already provided the location for his disciples. OK, it will. He sent them. He told them where to go, who to talk to. And they discovered there was a large furnished upper room that was already there. That was there. And all they had to do was prepare the room for the Passover, which was going to be the Last Supper with Jesus. In Luke 23, we see even here where Jesus gives everlasting life to the thief on the cross. Now, prior to this Jesus was being berailed and he was being abused uh, verbally. People were spitting on him. He had been beaten beyond human recognition. They, we have accounts in the scripture where they were even snatching out his beard, his own people. Um, he was berailed by his own people. It was the Jewish people, right? He came in flesh as a Jew. And so his own people brought him unto Pilate and was, and were falsely accusing him and and, and getting the crowd to go against him and saying all types of evil about him. So he was lied on. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. And in on top of that, to add insult to injury, a murderer was chosen over him for release from prison. Yet we find here he gave. He's given everlasting life at a point in his life where he's in absolute agony and pain hanging on a cross with barely anything on. We find in another, another area here in the word, we read about the centurion. Jesus gave without charge. He didn't say first pay me Roman. He taught the multitudes. He gave the beatitudes in Matthew five without charge. He raised uh, Jairus' daughter, who was one of the rulers of the synagogues, daughter without charge. 
And now based on how things was going on with Jesus and, and how they were giving him a hard time, I'm sure that this ruler of the synagogue may not have been necessarily believing completely in him. But he had enough belief to say, let me go ask him to help me with my daughter. So what am I saying, my brothers and sisters? Am I telling you that you're just supposed to, that people don't need to be paid? No, these ministries and things of that nature, you know, it takes money for things to run. But you find that there is a perversion going on where you find men, quote unquote, men and women of God that's calling themselves prophets and saying that they're this and that. They are actually withholding. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do this. You can't get a word from me unless you pay me which is, is that's just sacrilege, okay? I will not come to your church if you're not able to pay me this much up front and if you can't put me in a five-star hotel and if you can't fly me and my entourage in and I only drink this type of water, I don't want no uh, Avion water. I have, can only bring drink Pierre water and all these different things. Guys, you have that type of thing and you need to take me to this and that and if they happen to be in a town that there's a place that they want to go to if i'm gonna go you need to pay an all expense paid trip i want a, a a deluxe disney pass or whatever the case may be and guys what i'm trying to tell you this is a perversion we cannot take what god has given us and monetize it when you are doing god's work in faith and doing it right then nobody you should not be saying out of your mouth or tell anybody that they need to pay to hear from god they need to pray they need to pay in order to be blessed by god they need to pay in order to be loved by god they need to pay in order to be healed by god because jesus already paid the price prophecy and everything included okay so when you find false ministers and false prophets that's raising up and telling you that you need to pay me before I can wait, before I can work, before I can labor with you, before I can come with you. I'm here to tell you, run, run as fast as you can. And again, I will say, yes, ministries require money to run. But it's not going to be this quid pro quo thing that's going on. It's not going to be this, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That is perversion. I'm here to tell you that when you are totally doing what God tells you to do and you are not getting ahead of him and buying expensive stuff and getting big buildings to try to look good and, and getting yourself in debt, I'm telling you, you, when you move and as you grow, God will provide the people. God has given us gifts and talents within ourselves where God may say okay he gives you the idea to write a book or to do certain things or to have a business where you have income coming in you have things coming in to help you to take care of yourself and he will bless other people so they can bless you and they can bless ministries but you find what's happening is that people are taking preaching they won't even go preach somewhere unless people can pay them this enormous amount of money just for them to come and you're not going to pay for them alone. You're going to pay for their entourage. And they're not going to stay in any, ho any hotel. I mean, you don't want to put them in a hole in a wall, okay? I feel like anytime there's a hotel next to the pawn shop, that's the wrong answer, okay? So I get it. But guys, they're not even going to stay in like, you know, just a, a regular room at the Hilton is not okay. They got to stay in these great big hotels and things of that nature. So they put all this money on people and people are the churches expending money and doing all these different things and, and people the poor are depleting their pockets just for someone to give them a word but i'm here to tell you what did it cost you to get your gifts and to get your talents to those people to those pastors to the false prophets that's out there what did it cost you to get the gift of prophecy and don't talk about oh i went through this i went through that hey, i got nothing to do with you the lord brought you through those things and truth be told many of you you're not sacrificing nothing you are just pimping your gifts because you're not sacrificing nothing you're not trying to fast. And when you fast, you fasting on bread. Oh, this is a bread fast. All I'm having is bread today. All I'm having is biscuits today. All I'm going to have is just sodas and biscuits. Okay? But I'm not, I'm going to fast off of water and salads, but just biscuits. Come on now. I'm being facetious, but you get the point. 
And guys, I'm not trying to be where I'm angry because we have to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. But there is just a righteous anger, if you want to call it that. Okay, so righteous anger, which is what I feel is just where people, you see poor and and people who really want to know the Lord that's being wounded and going through these things with these individuals that's telling you, you got to pay me, okay, in order for me to move when you didn't pay nothing because Jesus paid the price. How, what did you pay for salvation? What did you pay to get saved? The Lord just chose us, my brothers and sisters. So what happens is when people get blessed, they forgot when they used to live on a school bus. When people get blessed, they forgot when they used to live in a car. When people get blessed, they forgot when they used to be stealing electricity from next door. They forgot when they used to be stealing cable, okay? And so when God begins to bless them, now they're, they, they get so caught up that they're like, oh yes, what does that sound like? That is exactly what Lucifer did. He got caught up in all that he was getting, all his gifts. And so he wanted to exalt himself. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of ministers and prophets that's doing this and telling you, you got to pay me. My brothers and sisters, when someone tells you that you have to pay them before they can minister to you or even talk to you, you need to run because that is the son or daughter of Satan. Yes. Just like Jesus called the Pharisees and scribes in Matthew 23, the children of the devil, that's what it is. They want your pockets and then tell you a word and tell you something to keep you hanging. Well, come back to me next week so I can tell you the rest. And then it's more money. I'm here to tell you God is going to come down so hard. His judgment, my brothers and sisters, a lot of people that's operating in this way, they know it's wrong because the Lord already spoke to them. But they just want to do what they want to do. And God has laid it on my heart that a lot of these people, if they don't stop, they are going to die. Not just spiritually, because they're already spiritually dead, but they're going to die. Meaning God is, you will, you will hear about them being in sudden car accidents, sudden death, airplane uh, crashing on their private jets. All these different things, guys. And I'm not speaking death. This is what the Lord has told me. If they do not repent, these people that are pimping the gospel, these individuals that has heard the voice of God, that's telling them to stop, but they won't. They don't want to let go. They don't want to go against the grain. They don't want to lose their face. God is saying a lot of these individuals that's doing this, they will see death. Some of them is going to be a sudden sickness in their body. You cannot take the things of God. You cannot take the holy things of God and use it for perversion and take from that mother or that father, that single father, or insult and mislead people that are truly wanting God, casting God's sheep away, fleecing them, using them for whatever you want to use them for, underfeeding them, their malnutrition, you're doing different things to them, you're kicking them, you're taking what you want to take, you're telling people they got to pay you, and God freely gave you a gift. I hear the Lord saying, death is coming if you do not take heed to my warnings. So my brothers and sisters, let's pray for these individuals. And if it's you, please, please repent and stop doing this. Because it, there are going to be just tragic, tragic, tragic consequences. Why? Because the devils you play with... That you have taken God's gift and brought it into and brought it to devils and demons and familiar spirits to operate in. They have no mercy and they will gladly extract your life. And they are excited about having these type of individuals in eternity for torment. But by the grace and mercy of God, he keeps a hedge around them and he keeps talking to them and he keeps talking to them and he keeps talking to them. But eventually he would have to take his hedge off. And then now it's lunchtime for the powers of darkness. My brothers and sisters, stop paying for prophecy stop paying to get a prophetic word stop paying people ministers those of you that have churches stop paying for people that put prices and say this is the only way i'm going to come to you 
they're not excited about just coming to serve the Lord. Of course, yeah, sure. You know, pay for their tickets if you can. But you know, a lot of these people, they can buy their own plane ticket, but they just don't want to. They just don't want to. They've become so, so puffed up that if a church that don't make a lot of money, they're not going to spend all the money that's already piled up in their bank account to say, you know what, I'm just going to fly here for free. I'm going to bless you guys. No charge. I'm just going to come and give the word because they live in large. They're making money in their, in their sleep, but they're not going to do that. No, you need to pay me. So you churches that's just starting up or, or whatever your case may be, you know what? Sometimes you want to get the big name. Sometimes you want to call in the big ministers of music, but God has already blessed you with talent right in your church. God has already blessed you with ministers right there. But you want the big names. Stop, stop endorsing this because you will cause the curse to come upon yourself and upon your household and upon your families. You should not pay for prophecy. You should not have to pay for someone to just counsel you and talk to you. Certain things, there should never be a price on it. And again, other times the Lord, the Lord knows that we need to live and we need to eat. So he's going to give us things where we can, we can get some money coming in. But what it is, is greed. Oh, I don't, I don't make enough from my books or, oh, I don't want to just have a business. I want to sit and I want to be lauded. I want to be lionized. I want to use my gifts. So now you got a bunch of Merlin, the magicians in ministry. You got a bunch of Houdinis in ministries. We've got to stop this guys. You don't have to pay for ministry. Stop looking to people for prophecy when you have the Holy Spirit right by you. When you have the comforter that Jesus speaks about in John chapter 14, 15, 16. Who is there who will lead you into all truth. Stop listening to lies from these soothsayers and prophets gone wild. Ministers gone wild. They're just doing what they want to do. They started off in righteousness and then the riches and the blessings got to them and they became crooked. You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ that you're able to see things clearly like he threw butter. You can see what's what and remove yourself because when you endorse it and you take out of your pocket and out of your account what the Lord has blessed you with to put in and endorse to get a ticket for their conference or to pay for this person to come into your church, to come with their demon and entourage and, and carnival and the circus comes up in your church and you're trying to figure out why you can't prosper and why you can't grow because you brought Merlin the magician and them up in your church. What are you looking at? What are you listening to, guys? You have to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And when you do that, he's going to lead you. Please turn around, my brothers and sisters. Our life is like a vapor. We can't afford to be living in darkness and ignorance and spend eternity disappointed because you're not where you thought you would be. You cannot be misled by the Holy Spirit. You cannot be misled by, misled by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. So turn to him completely, completely. Get into your word. You feel scared, then draw closer to God. Draw closer to Christ. Go deeper in your word and you hold on because your very life and eternity depends on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Not with homie the clowns in them. Stay with God and you will not be misled or disappointed. Let's continue to pray for those who are lost and pray that they return. And let us keep looking towards the hill from whence comes our help. No one else is our help but the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. All right, guys. Bye.